Good day, everybody. This is Chris back again with the Ancient Scholar, and now we're going to be uh, digging our heels into uh, crystal field theory, and this is sometimes a bumpy ride. This is actually a, this is not something that I find particularly intuitive. I haven't spent a whole lot of time in in, in chemistry really looking at coordination chemistry, so uh, uh, it, it tends to be a, a somewhat of a bumpy ride, I think. But we'll, we'll get through it. So, all right. So let's go ahead and uh, dive right in. So when we talk about um, transition metals, uh, transition metals are able to form what are called complexes, and this is why we, we often call the, the chemistry of transition metals complex chemistry. So uh, they and complex just means that you have a complex system of, of things happening, and, and, and that'll, that should become fairly uh, evident here in just a few minutes. So um, the, uh, the metals, um, can form what are called complexes. Okay, what are called complexes? They form complexes. Okay, with ligands. With ligands, and what in the heck is a ligand? If you've never heard of ligand, don't worry. We're we're going to talk about what a ligand is. Ligand's just a word. Okay, and what a ligand is. Okay, a ligand is something that is able to donate donate a pair of electrons. All right, can donate a pair of electrons. Now, if you've studied a lot of acid-base chemistry, you know that there there are really two two um, ways of looking at acid base. There's something known as the Bronsted Lowry, which deals primarily with um, hydrogen ions or hydronium ions, and then there is um, another type called the Lewis um, acid base, where a Lewis um, base donates electron pairs, and Lewis acids accept electron pairs. So you may hear um, ligands also called Lewis bases, okay? And it's okay if you haven't studied Lewis acids and bases. It's not really needed for, for what we're going to talk about here. But just know that this literally means donating a pair of electrons. Now, that isn't necess that's not saying that, so this is a ligand here, and maybe there's a pair of electrons on that ligand, that those electrons... Um, go, if this is my metal here, and the metal kind of sucks them up and takes the electrons away, the ligand's like, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to donate these to you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give them away. That's not exactly what we mean by donation. So what, what do we mean by donating, um, quote-unquote, a pair of electrons? Well, what we mean is, so if you remember we talked about um, transition metals um, being really good at giving up electrons, and um, they're really good at taking on different oxidation states. So let's just say that I have a generic metal here, okay? And that metal has given up two electrons, so it has a plus two oxidation state. So the overall charge on this metal, this ion, is positive, plus two. So um, things that are either negatively charged or things that have, um, or things that have a kind of these, these uh, kind of have electrons, which are just kind of hanging out in their valence shell, are going to be kind of interested in this positively charged metal here. Okay, so let's say that I have a ligand. All right, I have a ligand here, and that ligand has a. A, a pair, a lone pair of electrons just hanging out on in its, its valence shell here. Now, this ligand doesn't have to be negatively charged, okay? It could be a neutral ligand, okay? It, it may be a negatively charged, but that's not to say that it, it has to be negatively charged. Um, for example, I could have a water molecule where I have an oxygen here, and I have it covalently bound to two hydrogen atoms, and then I have a pair... Um, of electrons here. Well, actually, what I really have is, uh, since I, ha I have two electrons here, two electrons here, two here, I actually have two pair of electrons, like that, on, on oxygen. And these electrons might be attracted to that metal. Even though the, the water molecule is neutral, 
um, this part of the water molecule is more negative because there are pair, pairs of electrons here. Um, so th this is what we call a polar, polar molecule where I have more charge density in, in one area of a molecule. It doesn't necessarily need to be polar, but in, in this case, water is polar. But it just need there needs to be a lone pair of electrons um, that will be attracted to that metal. Okay, and what happens is, so here I have my metal, and I have these ligands that come in. Okay, Lig. We'll just say Lig. Okay, Lig. Lig, and they have these lone pairs of electrons on them, pairs of electron, pair of electrons, and those electrons are attracted to the metal because the metal has a positive charge. So they're attracted to it and they kind of get pulled in. And this right here, it's not a covalent bond because they're not sharing electrons really. Um, it's not an ionic bond because they're not giving their electrons up. Um, it's a kind of something, kind of its own little bond, if you will. Um, and and we we kind of just call this a uh, we can call this a coordination, okay? A coordination bond, okay? A coordination bond, and this whole thing. Okay, a metal with these ligands attached is called a coordination, okay, a coordination complex, all right? So that's the basic uh, thing that's going on there. And um, when we talk about ligands, ligands are interesting because ligands can actually, certain ligands can donate more than just one pair of electrons. Um, now, there are some ligands... Um, that can only donate one pair, okay? And we call those mono, monodentate. Monodentate ligands. All right? And dentate just means tooth, so you think about like a tooth grabbing into something, and then mono is just one. So these are ligands that only, can only donate one pair of electrons. So for example, um, let's say that I have a um, chlorine ion, okay, negative one, so it has uh, eight electrons in its valence, and that's what a chlorine ion looks like. Now that chlorine, and here I have my metal, that chlorine, um, so the chlorine comes in and it's attracted to that metal and there's a coordination bond that occurs there. Um, that Even though this chlorine has these four pair of electrons, um, you know, the chlorine comes in and it donates this pair, but these pair are back, back behind here. And so they're not able to, to kind of get in there to donate. So chlorine can only donate one pair of electrons. Um, another example might be um, a water molecule. Okay. Again, the same thing. Um, I have two pair of electrons on the oxygen. But um, as the oxygen comes in, it can only, only one of those, those two pair of electrons can actually um, be involved in the, the coordination. Um, and the other ones kind of kind of left out, if you will. Um, those are examples of monodentate. And then you can also have something called a bidentate, a bidentate ligand. Bidentate ligands um, just mean two teeth, so they are able to donate two pair of electrons. And I might draw something that looks like this. So I have an oxygen, double bond, carbon single bond double bond to oxygen here, okay, a single bond to an oxygen, single bond to an oxygen here, okay, and then what I have is I have a lone pair right here on those oxygens, and see how these are kind of spread a little further out, so these are actually able, so if I have my metal here, so I have one side of the metal here, another side here, well, they're far enough, these oxygens here are far enough apart where each oxygen on the same molecule can donate electrons. So this is what we call bidentate, where I have one ligand is able to donate um, two pairs, and then you have even um, even more than that. You you, you can have um, what we call polydentate ligands, and and, and probably the one of the most important polydentate ligands. Um, there are a few of them, but but one is called E D. T A. Ah, let me just 
clear that and do that again. E D T A. That's probably uh, something you'll want to want to want to memorize. And it kind of looks like boy. Let's see if I can do this here. Um, there's going to be a nitrogen C H two uh, C H two uh, nitrogen there, I believe. All right, that's going to come out. Uh, that's going to come out. H2 here, uh, CH2 here, 2 uh, here, 2 here, uh, this is going to come out, this is going to come out, carbon, um, I believe there's a double bond to an oxygen here, um, a C here, this is a carbon, I believe this is a single bond to an oxygen, uh, double bond to an oxygen, single bond to an oxygen here, and then we have the same thing occurring here, single, um, double, uh, double, single, okay? So this is EDTA, and EDTA is an example of a polydentate ligand, and so what you have is you have a pair of electrons here on these, uh, one pair on each nitrogen, just kind of hanging out there and wherever I have a single bond to an oxygen I have a pair of electrons there okay there we go there we go just like that so if you look at this I actually have one two three four five six so the EDT molecule is able to to um, provide uh, it's it provides six pair um, of electrons which is actually quite a bit um, and in a lot of cases one molecule can um, can coordinate with an entire um, ion of, of, of metal and these are really good um, at doing something called chelation okay they're really good at chelation or what we call chelating agents and so you may give these, and these are really good at, like, if I have a metal, maybe um, a, a, a patient has overdosed on a certain um, heavy metal, and I want to kind of pull that metal out of their bloodstream, um, and I kind of want to bind it and pull it out of the, the bloodstream, EDTA is really good because it can bind um, to the heavy metal, create a complex, and then pull that heavy metal out and chelate that heavy metal out of the person. So, um, so medically, um, these chelation agents, um, EDTA um, is an example of one. There are certainly um, other chelating agents, and you're certainly, I'd, I'd, I'd recommend you take a look at them, you know, things like defiroxamine, which is more specific to iron. Um, so there are other chelating agents, but EDTA tends to be one that, that shows up um, in the textbooks and, and possibly on tests. So I, I figure I talk about that. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it off here now that we kind of have an, a, a basic understanding of what ligands are, what's going on, um, and um, kind of setting up the basis of uh, what's going to happen with crystal field theory. Okay, guys, as always, uh, thanks for hanging in there.